Hello, this is Dr. Cisse covering anatomy and physiology. Today we'll talk about the electrophysiology of neurons. You're gonna be like, what? Electrophysiology? No, it's gonna be very simple, honestly. So we talk about a nervous system. Here you see a bipolar neuron with a dendrite on your left and axon on your right. Between them, you see a cell body with the nucleus in the middle. At the bottom, you see a blown up picture of the same thing on top here with the myelin covering the neuron, the axon. Between them, you see some kind of things going in. These are sodium ions. This area is called the node of Ranvier, and the space between them with the myelin is called the internode. Now let's talk about what we're gonna answer us here answer here today. We'll talk about electrophysiology. You're gonna be like, what? No. Current electrical charge, resting membrane potential, action potential, graded potential. These are big words, but very simple to understand. In order for us to understand, let's talk, let's talk about going to a movie theater. If somebody asks you to, des to describe what it's like to go to a movie theater, I mean, that's very simple. You're going to be like, oh, well, we have people such as students and professors who go to the movie theater. How do they go? They walk into the movie. Somebody opens the door. They come in. Some people go out. Some people go in. That's it. It's just a movement of people going in and out of the movie. And based on that, we can describe everything else that comes with the movie. If you have a lot of students outside the movie theater, if they push through the door, they can break the door, they can come in through the door, they put pressure on the door. If you have a lot of professors inside the movie theater, they want to come out, they can put pressure on the door. That pressure is called membrane potential. Their movement, it's called current. Very simple. And the process of studying those things in life is called what? movie theater physiology. So what is electrophysiology? It's the same thing. It's just movements, movement of ions in and out of the cell, creating a current. A current is just the flow of them, that's it. If you look at this, you see extracellular fluid outside the cell, intracellular fluid inside the cell. You see some channels, these are like doors through which you're gonna have sodium ions. You see them in yellow, I mean orange here, going into the cell and then at the bottom, you see blue ones. These are potassium, in this case, professors, going out of the cell. So their movement is called current. Their concentration differences, meaning you have more sodium, more students outside, they're more concentrated, create a potential, a potential energy. What is a potential? It's just the power to push against something. During this time, you're going to have a pump in the back door called the sodium-potassium exchange pump that will pump two potassium into the cell, right? And then three sodium out of the cell. Now you can see on this picture that the sodium potassium exchange pump on your left is working against the one on the side because on the right side, you want sodium, your student wants to come in and potassium wants to come out because you have more potassium inside the cell. So naturally, things once tend to go down their concentration gradient. It means they want to go where you don't have a lot of them. At the same time, we have a machine on the left that will push out three students out of the, 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 the movie theater, out of the cell. Now, if you want to push people against their concentration, you better use energy. That's why ATP is using energy. So this whole lecture is going to be about this. I just want to go into detail how this one happened. Now, if I want to describe the movie theater going, I'll say in the movie theater, Currents are movement of moviegoer, such as students and professors, through doors in the wall of the theater. Those doors open or close by various keys, which will let people in and out. That's the whole story of the uh, neurophysiology. What is electrical current? We're going to des describe that here too. So in the neuron, currents are a movement of ions, such as sodium and potassium, through channels in the plasma membrane. So those doors are opened by what? The gated channel opened by stimuli, which let ions going in and out. It create the current. The current is just a movement of those ions. So if you compare to a movie theater, think about it as professors going in or out, uh, students going in and out, that movement is called current. So what is electrophysiology? It is the study of mechanism for producing electrical potentials and currents. So let's define what is electrical potential. It's just the difference in concentration between 
the uh, ions inside and outside of the cell. So the electrical potential is like electrical power. It's the power you have when you have a lot of stuff inside that will go, go out or a lot of stuff outside that will go in. So it's just a current, all right? It's a, it's a movement. It's a power. So living cells are polarized. It means that living cells are inside negative and outside positive. So that creates attraction between positive and negative ions that create a uh, power for the ones that are high concentrated inside the cell, the potassium, or high concentrated outside the cell, sodium, to move with their concentration to create some kind of power to make them move. So what is the current then? A current is just the movement of those ions. If you take people, it's the movement of movie go goers, movement of student, movement of professor, just the movement is called the current. So now that you know that, why are we talking about this? The reason is because if you understand the electrophysiology is just the study of the way things happen in the cell and the electrical potential is just the difference in concentration that create power and the current is just a movement of flow, it will make you understand why does the movement of ion happen? Why? It is because things have to move down their concentration uh, gradient. If you put a lot of stuff inside the cell, they want to go out. They want to go out through what? Through the doors. Those doors are the gates. And the sodium potassium exchange pump, why is it important? It is the pump in the back door that will pump sodium and potassium against their concentration gradient. As you saw, it means that the sodium will go out of the cell, even though you have a lot of sodium outside already, it has to use ATP. That's why we use ATP. And it has to pump in potassium, even though we have a lot of potassium inside the cell. So those mechanisms of the sodium potassium exchange pump or the high concentration of sodium outside, the high concentration of potassium inside creates a situation where in case there is something, the cell can do something. That do something is called action potential. So why is the cell negative? You wonder, I know the cell is negative, why? Is this, one of the reason is that inside the cell, you see these uh, green things here, these are large molecules of proteins. They're negative. They're trapped inside the cell, they're negative, so they create negativity inside the cell. Second, because you have a lot of potassium inside, right, and you have a lot of sodium outside, and potassium and sodium do not have the same difference in concentration. Potassium is 40 times more concentrated. Sodium is only 12 times more concentrated. So that difference of concentration creates a power, creates some kind of energy that will push them against the door to create a membrane potential. And that, because the different concentration makes the inside of the cell negative. One other thing, the pump. The pump moves out three sodium and move in two potassium. You have more positive things going out, so you create the negativity inside the cell. So why you have the resting membrane potential? Why at the rest, there is a membrane potential? Because against is the power that these ions have because they have high concentration going against the other side has low concentration. Also, you have the attraction between the negative inside and the positive outside. Those negative and positive feel like coming together. So they put a pressure on the membrane that create a membrane potential, which is just membrane power. So which one has the greatest effect on the membrane potential? Which one affects uh, the membrane potential more? It is the potassium. Why? Because it's 40 times more concentrated in the cell. It has more pressure. It creates more pressure on the cell membrane. Sodium, yes, it has some influence. And then the pump, of course, it pumps out sodium and pumps in potassium. Three sodium out, two potassium in, and that gives about three millivolt out of the 70 millivolt. It's not a lot, but it's very important. So how do you create, how do you make cells do something? You do that by creating local potential, by creating, giving a stimulus. A stimulus can be the light, for example, in your eye, the sound in your ear, the taste of the food that will create, that will open some sodium gate that we saw at the beginning. When the sodium gets open, sodium will come in. That little interest of the sodium create a situation for a bigger thing. So it's kind of building up. There's a lot of local potential build up. Where do they happen? They happen at the dendrite here. So the dendrite receives the information like a small stimulus. They open sodium gate. And that sodium gate creates a situation in the soma to go to the trigger zone, which is the beginning of the axon, to create something, to create an action potential. So those greater potential are decremental. It means that if it doesn't build a lot, it will not happen. 
is uh, it also is reversible. It means that if the graded potential, like a little potential, doesn't build up enough, it can go back and stop. It's different than when it actually happens. When it actually happens, something happens, we call the action potential. What is that? Is the big shift, a big change in polarity. What is polarity? Remember the inside the cell is negative, outside is positive. So that polarity change by the interest of a lot of sodium creates something that something is called action potential. That action potential is important because it is the process during which the cell is doing something. And it can be continuous. When there's no myelin covering on the axon, it will go very slow. But when there is, so this is action potential here, just depolarization, repolarization, hyperpolarization. So we'll explain this in detail a little bit here. You see that the cell is negative 70 millivolt. We say the cell is negative inside already. And when sodium comes in, it makes the cell positive inside. But it has to reach the threshold by the local potential. After it reaches the threshold, <clears throat> the voltage gates, the gates that open based on voltage will open to let a lot of sodium in to make the cell positive inside up to plus 35. Then the sodium gates will close. The potassium gates will open. Because we know already there are a lot of potassium inside, if you open the gate, it will come out. The professors will come out of the movie. When they come out, it will bring back the cell to where it used to be. We still repolarizing, bring it back to where it used to be. It goes down to hyperpolarization and then come to normal cell level. You can see that here. But if it's saltatory conduction, meaning that the action potential is moving from node to node, it's going to be fast. So saltatory will be fast. It's going to be on myelinated one. You can see here, saltatory. It's moving from node to node. So how does it is generate? Of course, we explained already that the membrane potential has to go from zero to plus by, because the, you got sodium coming in. When it reaches 35, the gates close, sodium gates close, potassium open, potassium goes out, you repolarize the cell again, and then the cell comes back to normal. And the resting membrane potential is restored by what? Sodium leaks in again and potassium and extracellular potassium uh, is removed by astrocyte. So the potassium is being eaten. We saw the astrocyte, the glial cell, they protect and clean up, you know, they kind of remove extra stuff. We know that the microglia are the one that clean up, but the astrocytes kind of clean all the extracellular potassium around the neuron. So here, this action potential we say follows an all or none law. It means either it happened or it doesn't happen. There's no halfway, but greater potential may happen halfway and stop. So during action potential, there is a period when there's no other action potential possible. We call that absolute refractory period. But at the end, when you repolarizing, depending on the power that you give again, you can create another action potential. So here you see the absolute refractory period during action potential and the relative but if you go back a little bit, depending on the power you give, the, the strength of the stimulus, you can create a second action potential. Now, let's go back to this question. Do you know now what is electrophysiology? It's just a study of mechanism, how things happen in the cell. What is the current? Just the movement of ions. Sodium coming in, potassium going out. That's it. What is electrical charge difference? It means how much stuff you have outside and how much stuff you have inside. Now you know you have a lot of sodium outside, a lot of student outside, a lot of potassium professors inside. They push against the membrane to give a power. We call that power membrane potential. And then when there's a small spill, stimulus called a small spill creating a graded potential, like a local potential, it builds up and builds up to become an action potential, which is a powerful, a very strong depolarization by the movement rushing of sodium into the cell to reverse the charges to make the inside of the cell positive instead of negative. We call that depolarization because you remove the pole and then after that you're going to be repolarized again the cell to come back its normal way. So uh, how the way local response generate a nerve signal, you know that. Local generate by having small stimuli on the cell, on the dendrite to create something that will go to the cell body and the action healer to create action potential. Why do this information matter? You know why? Because action potential is just telling the, some, the cell is doing something. If you taste something or if you see or hear something, it's because that stimulus is able to power, to excite your neuron to do something. That something is called what? Action potential. 
Well, see you in class. Thank you very much for watching.